Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. If you're there, say God provides. God provides. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Verse 11. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Have you learned that? Have you learned that? It, that's a learning process. To be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. Do you know what it is to be in need? Yes. Oh, I sure do. I know what it is to, to have to go to the 99 cent store for your dinner. Believe me. That's before I met my prosperous wife, though. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. Say plenty. I'll take the plenty, thank you. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry. Tell somebody next to you, you're well-fed. Ha, 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 you did it. Whether living in plenty or in want. Verse 13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Listen, not that I'm looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied, thank you, now that I have received from Aphrodite the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering. Everything we do becomes like a fragrant offering to him. Every act of faith, every act of obedience. God says, mm, 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 mm. I smell the rain. The rains are coming. Mm. That perfume is unmistakable. There are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And here it is. And my God, say my God, my God. will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory by or in Christ Jesus. King James is by Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. You see, the promise of provision was given to those who supported the gospel. That's how it is. That's it. That's it. As, as a Christian, that's how our needs are met. Now, one more New Testament scripture, okay? You have James there. You're going to read that on your own if you would. Now turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you're in Philippians, turn back a few pages. 2 Corinthians. If, you got, if you're in Romans, you went too far. Chapter 9. Verse 10. And if you have a Bible, turn there. I, I'm very patient. I, I will wait. Okay, that's it. No. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Again, this is the Apostle Paul. This is verse 10. Now he who supplies, say supplies, seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of what? Seed. You see, we're supposed to be planting this stuff. We're not supposed to be hoarding it. Hoarding it. And will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way. Does your Bible say that too? You will be made rich in every way. What are you preaching this morning, Pastor? I, I don't know, but I like saying this. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Well, you say, George, you know, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not rich. What? Well, okay. You're, you're talking materially or financially, you're not rich? All right. Take your income, what you make, your house, if you have a car, what you drive, and so forth, and find somebody in a third world nation and, and, and find out what they have 
Just compare it just for, you know, sake of argument. And then tell me you're not rich. Amen. They'll think you're rich. Amen? Amen? Of course, he's talking about other things in addition to that. Rich in faith. Rich, rich in love. Rich in grace. Rich in mercy. Rich. In Espanol is rico. Rico. I will name my next son Rico. Okay, I can't have any more. You are named Rico now. Aren't you glad Marcos here? He's going to take this and translate it in, in Spanish when he goes back to Mexico, right? That part you don't have to translate. Okay. But, but you see, God richly provides what? Seed. Seed. And what do you do with seed? Eat it? If you eat the seed, that's all you'll have. If you plant it, you'll have a harvest. Praise God. A harvest of righteousness, faith, love, joy, etc., etc. Anything that you sow, including finances, anything that you sow, He promises that you'll get back in greater measure. Amen? Because God has, has woven into the fabric of this universe the law of reciprocity. Give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now the story of Abraham and Isaac, does it sound familiar? It, except for the fact that there was someone who did not spare his one and only son, but gave him up for us all. You see, you see the relationship. You see that this was a type of, of, of the Father and the Father God and, and Christ Jesus, his son. You see the, the similarities? But God did not stop from sacrificing his son. He was sacrificed. All throughout the Old Testament, we see the gospel presented to us. Examples of what God would accomplish in the New Testament. The reason that God stopped Abraham from sacrificing Isaac is because there would be a lamb or a perfect sacrifice given in the future. That's Jesus, the son of the living God. Isaac did not have to die. Oh, thank God. Because a price would be paid. We don't have to die spiritually because a price has been paid. The lamb was slain upon the eternal altar. Hallelujah. Don't you love faith? Faith is what allows us to see this provision. And it is faith that allows us to see any type of provision. When I became a Christian, have you become a Christian? Oh, yes. I abandoned all other lower sources or resources of provision. I embraced Jehovah Jireh, my provider. By giving my life to Jesus, I was saying, I will trust you, God, to provide. Therefore, eliminating all reason to fear and all other options of provision for myself, my family, my church, and so forth. God is our provider. May I say as pastor of this church that God is our provider. Yes. This church is provided for by yes. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You know, because we're a smaller church that came from a larger church, they say, oh, does the larger church pay for everything? I'm, it's been 15 years, I'm still waiting for something, but I, maybe, I'll let you know when it happens. Hope Chapel will depend on no man, no government, and no other source but God himself. We don't need to look to the hand of Pharaoh. We don't need to receive from the king of Sodom. I have one question left. Have you made the Lord your provider? I have another question. Is Jehovah Jireh your personal provider in Jesus' name? 